Good morning everyone. Scooter coming to you live from the Granville Guitars World Headquarters here in lovely St. Petersburg, Florida. Today is Friday, March the 8th, 2019. And I want to chat with you a little bit today about uh, something going on here at Granville that I'm really uh, very excited about. Um, I, I enjoy everything I do here. Um, guitar repairs, refrets, setups, uh, amplifier repairs, etc. But my favorite thing to do is to build things. Um, mostly pedals and guitars, those are, are things that I've done in the past, but here in the last few years I've really gotten into building amplifiers and I've built a number of different designs. I've built some Fender designs and some Marshall designs and a few things that I've cobbled together myself from scratch and uh, just had a, a lot of fun doing it and uh, the circuit that I've come to enjoy the most is the Marshall 2204 50 watt uh, JCM 800 circuit um, it's it's definitely my favorite I think it's the most versatile um, it, it's very clean and warm when you want it and when pushed it will distort in just the right ways uh, pedals work really well in front of it um, at least the way I configure it and uh, it's just a lot of fun you get a lot of classic tones have been created uh, with this circuit what you're looking at here well let's look at the first one up here the one that's up higher this is serial number one um, which is actually not serial number one its serial number is 032974 which is a tribute to my lovely wife Angie uh, that's actually her birthday and this is my AMD 800 um, it's the first one I built, I built it two years ago and uh, really enjoyed it uh, it's, it's just a killer amp it, uh, there's a video demo of it out there uh, from shortly after I finished it and it uh, it does everything I want and does it very very well and uh, yeah it's as flexible and wonderful and toneful as it possibly could be now you can see if you look just as a point of interest I originally started doing my ground bus on the back of the potentiometers the way marshals have been done since marshals have been around well I decided not to do that um, I think that's an unreliable way to do your grounds over time and so I removed all of those ground points not relying on the pot casings themselves for a ground reference and put tag strips oops, went in too fast and now it's confused uh, at the front of the amp and we'll see those a little more clearly later and used three specific points for all my grounds you can see the first one there near the input jacks uh, the filtering for the preamp is gr grounded at that same point as well as the first couple potentiometers and then I have another ground point here and then the third ground point is way over there uh, all of the uh, main power filters and um, the the IEC receptacle for the three prong removal cord is grounded there uh, that, when you when you minimize your total ground points uh, you get better noise specs and I just felt like using a ground bus to get across all of those potentiometers was counterproductive to a good grounding scheme uh, you want your amp to be as free of noise as possible and so you do things to that end and that's one of the things I did you'll notice in serial number two which is the amp I just completed I did not ever uh, solder anything to the back of the pots. We went with that grounding scheme right from the beginning. Uh, and you can see that, that bus right there uh, where everything is grounded there. And then there's another one there. And then if we go down to the other end of the amp, we can see the, the other grounding bus down there. Um, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> if we come from the, uh, let's go back up to serial number one, or the, fir the original anyway, you can see that it's, it's, it's a standard configuration. There's not too much funny business going on. Um, 
standard rectifier there. I like the four diode rectifier. Some of these designs for this amplifier, you'll see layouts uh, some places where there's only two rectifier diodes. I like four better. Um, I just think it handles the, the, the chores a little better. Uh, you can see your biased supply circuit here with the uh, two capacitors and resistors and the uh, trim pot. And then we come down here further to the splitter section and, and on through the amplifier. I'll give you a little close-up look at what I'm using here. Um, a couple of notes. You'll notice that I've chosen specific resistors for specific tasks, in other words, specific compositions. Um, the the uh, metal oxides down there, um, probably overkill. Honestly, you don't need to use metal oxides down there, but I like what they do better. I think they behave better um, in certain aspects. Um, and you'll notice here uh, my splitter resistors uh, for the uh, oh hell went in too far again uh, those are carbon film if it will focus come on darling I need to figure out the autofocus on this silly thing anyway um, I've chosen specific types of resistors for specific jobs um, and done a, a fair amount of testing back and forth among the various types to achieve what I like. Uh, you'll notice that earlier in the circuit, well, the very first resistor in the circuit, if we can zoom in on it, it's right down, it's tucked in here, this one meg input resistor. That is a Dale uh, mill spec, um, and it's a film resistor. Uh, metal film. Uh, very accurate, uh, extremely close to one meg, and they're quiet. They're dead quiet. At the input on a Marshall design, I feel that you want the, your, your best chance for good tone is to minimize the noise right there. So that's why I use that there. Uh, you can see in the input stages here, I'm using actual carbon comps. In some cases, they're new old stocks. I like what that does for the sound in those particular stages and that's why it's been used. You can see uh, that I've used shielded wire on both designs, both this one and the serial number two, um, to get the signal from uh, the input to the the first preamp tube. You can't see them from this angle but let's see if I can get down here. You can see where that goes to this turret right here. Um, I should probably mention the boards. These first three serial numbers, the boards were made for me by uh, Watts Tube Audio here in St. Pete. Um, I think in the interest of making this as much mine as possible, well, I don't think, I know. After this, I'm going to start making my own turret boards. Um, I've fiddled with the idea for a while and done some practicing and experimentation. Uh, there's some things I'd like to do differently. Um, so I've decided the best way to approach that is going to be to do my own turreting. Uh, uh, and so I've sourced the materials and um, the, as of serial number four, you will see a board that I made for myself. Again, that's, that's the first one there, um, my AMD. Here is the new one here. And you can see our layout is, is identical because it's the, these are both boards from Watts Tube Audio. Uh, but I've done a few things differently, routing-wise. Uh, componentry is, is pretty much the same, using the same values and, and compositions here. Uh, the carbon comps here and here, these 100K plates. Um, I like to use a carbon film here and a carbon comp there. I, I tried a, a bunch of different um, compositions there, and really, friends, we're starting to pick nits <laughs> when we do things like that. We really are, and it's kind of a toss-up uh, sometimes uh, because hearing is your worst sense memory when you're comparing stuff unless you have a, what's called a decade box <clears throat> that allows you to immediately change things back and forth. You really can't compare apples to apples, as it were, uh, quite as well. But anyway, um, I just wanted to show off the inside of these amps a little bit. Um, I didn't do this 
when I shot the first AMD video, um, I did not, uh, I had already sealed it back up and just didn't open it up. But this is what the inside of these amps look like. And I've just really been enjoying myself. Um, one thing that I really do insist on, um, <clears throat> and I'll get in a minute to what I uh, arrived at um, conceptually when uh, when I was building these. These these five watt vitreous enamel resistors, these new old stocks here, I really feel those are are important to the overall. Uh, sound of the output section. I'm not sure why. Um, I just feel like, you know, Marshalls of the, of the 70s and 80s came with this style of resistor for their screen grids. That's what they are. I'm sorry, I did not mention that. Those are screen grid resistors. Um, and I think they're real important. They, they, they handle what they have to do in just the right way and they stay cool and, um, you know, they're, they're, they don't fail easily. Um, they do sometimes fail. I've seen them fail, but they have the right sound uh, and do the job the way I want them to do. Um, when I embarked on this project two years ago and decided I was going to build the first one, I, I compiled a lot of information about <coughs> Marshall 2204 circuits. And I, I the the table that I compiled was I looked it up, it was 10 different Marshall heads that I tested of that era, mid 80s to late 80s, uh, JCM 2204s over the years. I made a table and I measured all of the resistors and capacitors in the circuit, uh, capacitors for ESR and um, resistors for their various ratings. And the ones that sounded really good to me, it turns out that most of them are very close to schematic in their resistor values. Um, I don't know whether that's an actual symptom or it's just endemic of, of some other thing in the amplifier. I'm not sure, but I was real careful to make sure when I'm selecting resistors, I reject a lot of resistors that aren't close to spec. Uh, in other words, what the schematic is calling for um, in order to make it as repeatable and precise as possible. The other thing that I found is good iron, good transformers. Um, I'm, I'm offering these amps for sale. As a matter of fact, this one is sold. Serial number two is sold, and also serial number three, which is going to be done on this board right here. This is going to be serial number three. I'm getting ready to start this actually today. Um, <coughs> those two amplifiers are already sold. Uh, serial number three is going to get one of the two options that I am going to offer. Pretty much, the, the AMD 800 is pretty much going to be like a Model T Ford. You can have any color you want as long as it's black. <laughs> I'm not going to do any mods to these. I'm not going to offer a whole bunch of different options. Um, I've come up with a recipe that I really like and I think is really toneful and wonderful. And I'm pretty much just going to specialize in that. I'm going to stick with that. The two options I am going to offer are a Metropolis Zero Loss Effects Loop uh, for an extra fee that you can, if you want to know about the price structures, you can call me or uh, email me, Granville Guitars. Um, the, the only other option I'm going to offer is uh, Mercury Magnetics as a... As a uh, an extra option for transformers. Uh, the transformers I'm using are Mojo Tone, and I love them. Um, they're they're very economical, and they have the right sound. Um, you know, I spec'd out a lot of different transformers. Uh, the original AMD uses a specific transformer set that was actually selected by my good friend uh, Mr. Charles Lyon. Uh, he uh, selected the output transformer from Classic Tone, which is another option that I that I investigated when I was uh, first getting into this process. Um, he used a Marshall, a genuine Marshall choke, and the power transformer. The uh, the brand escapes me right now, but as legend goes, it's the same power transformer 
that Ken Fisher used in his train wreck amplifiers. Um, so anyway, if you have any questions about having one of these built for yourself, uh, contact me uh, either through the website www.granvilleguitars.com. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. And you can just call me here at the shop if you like. That's the way I like to work best is phone calls. Uh, so anyway, um, I guess that's really all the background that I have here. Let's see if I can um, let's see if I can maneuver around a little bit. Well, you know what? I'm just going to turn these around so you can see them from the other angle.